How to monitor coral reefs for stony coral tissue loss disease. Stony coral tissue loss disease is a new disease that spreads extremely rapidly, has very high rates of prevalence and causes very high mortality amongst over 30 susceptible stony coral species. This video will show you how to monitor your reefs for stony coral tissue loss disease. It explains where to focus your monitoring efforts, how to do roving diver surveys, how to complete the coral disease data sheets and understand the role of underwater photography. Monitoring is important. It will help you to correctly identify this new coral disease, track its spread and assess the effectiveness of measures you might take to halt its progression. When first monitoring for stony coral tissue loss disease in the invasion stage, it is recommended that you do roving diver surveys. Roving diver surveys are a census conducted while snorkeling or diving that allows you to survey a broad area of reef. While conducting the census, focus specifically on the species most susceptible to stony coral tissue loss disease. First, assemble and train a team of snorkelers or divers to conduct the surveys. Your surveyors need to be capable snorkelers or, in the case of divers, they need to be able to maintain good buoyancy at all times, especially while writing on data sheets underwater. The surveyors need to be able to correctly identify the susceptible coral species, so training your team is important. Some of the first species that present with the disease when an outbreak occurs are the maize, pillar, elliptical star, the various brain corals, and sometimes the massive starlet and great star corals. Make sure that you and your monitoring team can correctly identify the coral species most susceptible to the disease. We recommend both classroom sessions and field practice. Agra and GCFI have training materials that you can call on. A complete list of the susceptible species can be found on GCFI's website at this address, and the Agra website has coral training resources at this address. One of the Agra data sheets uses four letter codes for the corals and is also for bleaching monitoring. It can be used by Agra trained surveyors and anyone who knows corals by their scientific names. The other, simpler version of the data sheet uses common names for the corals. It's available in English, Spanish, and French. This data sheet is intended for use by volunteers, community researchers, and staff without advanced training. Both data sheets can be found on AGRA's website at this link. Next, decide where to monitor. Some criteria that you may want to consider when identifying monitoring sites are what species are present. Look for sites that contain the species that are most susceptible to the disease, like the maize, brain, star, and starlet corals. Previous AGRA or any other monitoring data you might have can help you identify where you should invest your monitoring efforts so that you survey more of the susceptible corals. Do you have any sites with iconic coral colonies? If you have susceptible corals that are recognized as being important for historical, educational, or economic purposes, such as tourism and shoreline protection, then those sites should be monitored to identify the first signs of the disease. Has anyone noticed sick looking corals? If your local dive operators or fishers report seeing a lot of bleached or sick looking corals in a particular area, then those sites should be visited to determine if the disease is present there. To do roving diver surveys, each diver swims in a lawnmower fashion back and forth across parts of the site, looking for susceptible corals and tallying how many are affected or not by the disease. It's important that the same coral isn't counted more than once, so spread your divers out so the same area isn't covered by more than one of them. A tip is to go no further than about 50 meters from the coordinates of the point that you're aiming to check. It's important to get a representative sample of the corals at the site. If there are lots of corals of the susceptible species, then try to assess between 100 to 200 individual corals. If there are only a few corals of the susceptible species, then stop when the whole area has been examined. Please remember to be careful when diving or snorkeling. Your safety and the safety of everyone around you should be your top priority. On the simpler Agra data sheet, each diver should record the following information before the survey starts. 
the name of the person monitoring, the date of the survey, the site name, whether the site is protected or not, latitude and longitude coordinates of the site. If GPS is not available, approximate the coordinates later on at AGRA's website or by using Google Earth. If GPS is not available, you can also identify markers on shore. Next, record the following data during the survey. The depth range, habitat type, survey time in minutes, and a tally of each of the stony corals that are most susceptible to stony coral tissue loss disease as it is encountered during the survey. Tally by species and whether or not the coral is live, diseased, or recently dead. Also record if any pictures of the corals have been taken. Live corals look healthy with normal healthy tissue color. No signs of active disease, bleaching, or unusual signs of stress. The column for diseased corals should be used to indicate those corals affected by stony coral tissue loss disease. These may have tissue sloughing off, exposing white intact skeleton. If the corals are affected by other diseases, then these can be noted in the comment section. For more information on disease identification, please refer to the MPA Connect resources, including an ID poster and an in-depth webinar on GCFI's website at this address. Recently dead means that the coral's skeletal features, which were exposed when the overlying polyps died, are clearly visible, haven't yet been eroded, and are identifiable to species even if covered with a thin layer of algae, sediment, or bacteria. When deciding whether or not any particular coral is live, diseased, or recently dead, don't worry if you're not sure about the common name of one of the brain or star coral species. Instead, you can record it as any brain or any star coral. Pillar corals and massive starlet corals should be easy to unambiguously recognize at most sites, and the simple data sheet doesn't require learning the common names for the maize and lettuce corals. In order to help determine if any suspicious looking corals do have stony coral tissue loss disease, we encourage divers to take photos of the dive site. This includes landscape view shots of the habitat to help indicate disease prevalence, plus close-up photos of corals to show any suspicious signs of the disease. Close-up photos, particularly when something doesn't seem right, should be taken with a scale so that you can document any potential progression of the disease. Stony coral tissue loss disease spreads very rapidly and using the scale during repeat visits will help you monitor disease progression. Taking repeat photos of suspicious looking corals at the same angle during each survey will help you document this tissue loss. Tagging suspicious looking corals can help you easily find them during subsequent monitoring trips. Once you finish diving or snorkeling, be sure to wash and decontaminate your gear. Your data can now be entered and analyzed. See our separate video about analyzing your findings. For more information, please go to the Coral Disease page on GCFI's website at this link, or go to the Coral Disease page on AGRA's website at this link. We'd like to thank NOAA's Coral Reef Conservation Program, the Turks and Caicos Reef Fund, the Atlantic and Gulf Rapid Reef Assessment Program, the Honduran Coral Reef Foundation, and Sustainable Grenadines Inc. for helping us to create this video. And thanks to many others who helped with editing this video.